All right, so the first program I'm gonna do is based on a really great talk by Zach Lieberman, where he just kind of goes into how he makes his generative talk, um, drawings. And if you haven't heard of Zach Lieberman, uh, check him out. I'm sure I'll link to the talk in this blog post, um, and you'll see some of the stuff there. But basically, he um, starts in the center of his screen with a circle, and then draws a sine wave from that circle and then kind of makes it move around. So let's start with that and then we'll start to make our initial sketch sort of more interactive and using the audio and also those knobs on the uh, Critter and Guitari ETC in order to make um, an original sketch more interactive and to see really how you can start with somebody else's work and then kind of adapt it and turn it into your own. All right, so the first thing I want to do in my sketch here is um, I want to get my very first thing drawn on the screen. And so the resolution of the Critter and Guitari ETC is 1280 by 720. So it's a 720p uh, um, device. So if we do a pi game dot gfx draw dot fill filled underscore circle, and it takes in the screen, which is passed into here. Um, and then we'll do the X position. Well, actually, let's do it like this since I have my video here showing the screen. Uh, a X position, a Y position, a radius, and finally a color. And so now we have to create all these things. So in order to get the center of the screen, we can do x equals uh, 1280 divided by 2, right? So the screen is 1280 pixels wide. Divided by 2 would be the center of the screen. And then the y will do 7, 720 divided by 2 also. And then let's set our color equal to the etc.color underscore picker. So this is a helper that we have with the uh, Critter and Guitar ETC. That last dial changes the color, and it's the, the fourth knob. So if we do this, we'll get a color back from that. Um, finally, let's pick our radius. Radius equals, let's do 50. So it's going to be 50 pixels wide. And so now if I scroll down, click Save, you can see that I have my circle drawn in the very center of the screen. Nice, but not exactly um, not exactly <laughs> interactive. It doesn't do anything. So let's do our very first for loop. So for i in range, and then let's do the whole length of the screen. Um, so that would be 720, right? For the whole height of the screen. And then let's, do, let's put the pi game into this new thing, right? And then let's change the uh, y position to be i. And so now if we run that, we have the circles filling up the entire screen. So I want you to notice here, I have imported math and imported time. So f next, I'm going to change this x position. Um, let's change it to inside of this loop. And let's say x equals um, int. So we always have to have an integer for our x position. And then let's do one, let's do six hundred. Let's do six. I'm trying to do math in my head, but it's not going to work. Let's do six hundred um, minus fifty times math dot sign so we're gonna get this the sign signal um, the sign function sorry times um, time let's do times point five plus time dot time all right let's try that and so one thing that's probably gonna happen here is I might run some code wrong um, okay so we can see what's going on there let's try changing this multiplier here and save 
All right, so that's cooler. So if I go smaller still, and I hit save, you'll see I now I have a little bit of a sine wave that can go back and forth. So if I do 0.15, save it, nice. Um, so cool, you can tell the x is going back and forth on a sine wave. So this x position is changing to match the sine wave. Um, if we wanted to, we could add our knob here so that our knob can control it. I wonder if this is gonna work if I like step back and change that knob. So let's do times etc dot knob one. So that first knob is gonna control this divided by five. Let's just try this. Save. All right, now I'm gonna try changing this knob. I don't know if this is gonna work or not. All right, so now we've got a sine wave that we can control using this knob. So we can go from a very straight sort of wavy to a quick wavy to super wavy to almost a line. All right, cool. So now, what else can we do with this? Well, all of these etc.knobs give you a value from zero to one. So when I divide by five here, I'm cutting it in half. So it goes from you know zero to 0.5, um, or no, 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 0.2, sorry. <laughs> so it's hard to talk and code and do math at the same time. So yeah, so we're gonna get point from zero to 0.2. Um, on there as our values. Um, you could go even further, we could go to 0.10, and then you'd see how that just changes the value of that knob when I turn it. And another thing to know too is that, um, let's, let's say I write some code and it doesn't work. Like let's say that I put something bad here. If I hit save with the Critter Guitar ETC, it's just gonna revert to the last known working um, program. So if I delete that, hit save again, it's gonna start working again. All right, so let's see if the, the color changing works too. I'm gonna reach over. So yeah, there you can see that color knob also works. So we have the very beginnings of our sort of interactive, playable drawing program. Um, let me turn off this crazy color changing mode. Go back to something that's at least decently viewable. All right, so the next thing I want to do is I want to change the colors. Um, let's try jumping into that now and see if we can get something interesting going here. Actually, you know what? No. Let's not do that. Let's let's change this radius next. So we've got this X changing with that 4i there. Um, let's add one. I'm just hitting enter so I get more space so that you guys can see the code I'm writing. Um, so let's do the radius too. So radius equals, and let's make it sine wavy to int, and let's do 50 plus math dot sine and we can do i times etc dot knob two divided by 10. Actually, so on this, okay, we'll do this at plus time dot time, and then let's finally multiply this times. Hmm, actually, we're gonna change this. Times five, no, times 10. Yeah, that, that seems good enough. Let's do this. Let's just try something. It's always better to try with values than to overthink it. So there you can see that we've changed that knob value. And if I turn it, we should be able to see the size of that value change too, to go along with it. And so there you go. You can see kind of that blobby, nebulous sort of form on the ETC. So we're starting to get some more interactive, wavy, sort of blobby stuff going on. And I'm actually really enjoying it. 
Uh, one more thing I want to do here. Um, I don't know if you can see it better or worse like that. But, ooh, yeah, that orange is actually pretty. That orange is pretty good contrast for you to be able to see it. Um, so I can kind of play with the knobs. If I just turn one knob, you can see, and then I can get them all blobbed together. Smaller, bigger. Just want to see if I can get. It's kind of a lava lamp ish effect right there. Um, so let's play with the color. Um, so right now we just have this consistent blob color that you're picking with that ETC color picker. If we take apart the color, let's figure out how that works. So um, one thing I want you to see here is with these sine waves, I'm doing, for the radius, I'm doing 50 plus math.sine times 20. So that's going to adjust the radius of it by 20. So let's make it bigger actually right now. Let's do 50. Um, and so that allows us, so the sine function gives us a number between negative 1 and positive 1. And it oscillates between the two. And so that's what's giving us the bubbles getting bigger and smaller. And so if we play with the dials, we can kind of start getting some cooler looking stuff going on. <laughs> 